The Columbia Workshop presents The Trojan Women by Euripides, adapted for radio by John Houseman and the translator Edith Hamilton, with score by Virgil Thompson. greatest play about war was written 2,356 years ago. It has little plot and almost no action. The characters, except for a few subordinate parts, are all women. After ten years of war, a great city has fallen. Only women are left. Their husbands dead, their children taken from them. They are waiting to be deported as slaves. One is an old woman whose husband, the king, has been murdered before her eyes. Her sons, too, are dead, and she who was queen is now a slave. There is her daughter, a virgin dedicated to the service of the temple, who has become the property of the victorious commander-in-chief. Her daughter-in-law, the wife of her favorite son, is to belong to the son of the man who killed him. And there are other humbler women, weeping for the loss of home, husband, children, and everything sweet. That is the whole of it. It is early morning, soon after sunrise. To the east, dim against the sky, are the shattered towers of Troy, the conquered city. To the west, running down to the sea, is the beach where the victorious Greek army is encamped, and the Greek warships and transports drawn up, being made ready for the long voyage home. We are just outside the city gates with the prisoners, Trojan women. One of them, an old woman, is lying on the ground, her face in the dust. Oh, the ways of fate are the ways of the wind. Drift with the stream, drift with fate. No use to turn the prow to breast the waves. Let the boat go as it chances. Keep silent. Speak. Weep then. Cry. Oh, what? What sorrow is there that is not mine? Grief to weep for, country lost, and children and husbands, glory of all my house brought low. Troy is no longer. We are not the lords of Troy. Who am I then that wait here at a Greek king's door, a slave that men drive on, an old gray woman that has no home? Oh, Troy. Let us weep for her. Your cry, O oh, Hecuba. Oh, such a cry. What does it mean? There in the tent we heard you call so piteously. In the tent we were weeping too, for we are slaves. Look, child. There where the Greek ships lie. They are moving. The men hold oars. Look at the sailors standing on the prows. Oh, God, what will they do? Carry me off over the sea in a ship far from home. You ask, and I know nothing. Oh, Troy, unhappy Troy. We, the unhappy, leave you. We who are living and we who are dead. Has word come from the Greek camp? Whose slave shall I be? Wait for the lot drawing. It is near. Am I a slave? To whom? Where? How? An old gray woman patient to endure. A bee without a sting. An image of what was alive or the ghost of one dead. I watch at a master's door. I nurse his children. Once I was queen in Troy. The shuttle will still pass through my hands, but the loom will not be in Troy. My dead sons. I would look at them once more. Never again. Worse to come. A Greek's bed. Oh, never. Not that for me. Look. Soldiers, they're coming to tell us what. What will they say? 
A detachment of Greek soldiers is marching up from the beach. It has come. Once we only feared it. The lots are drawn. A different man takes each. My daughter. Who drew her? Cassandra. King Agamemnon chose her. To serve his Spartan wife? No. For the king's own bed. Oh, never. She has vowed to guard a virgin always. And she is mad now. Driven mad with that grief, too. My other child you took from me. She is free from trouble. Then Hector's wife, my Hector, where does she go? Andromache? Achilles' son took her. And I, old gray-haired, whose slave am I, creeping along with my crutch? Slave of the king of Ithaca, Odysseus. Pity me, women of Troy. Oh, Hecuba, you know what lies before you. But I, what man among the Greeks owns me? Go now and bring Cassandra here. Be quick. We must give her to the chief, and then these here to all the other generals. Open there. Open the gates. It is my daughter, Cassandra. Sing for the bride. She is Joyously all. Maidens of Troy. Dressed in your bed. Hold her fast. Honor my marriage. Poor frenzied girl. Oh, Mother, I'll crown my triumph with a wreath. Be glad, for I am married to a king, Agamemnon, the great, the glorious lord of Greece. I shall kill him, Mother. Lay his house as low as he laid ours. Make him pay for all he made my father suffer. And I will show you this town now. Yes, mother, is happier than the Greeks. I know that I am mad. But mother, dearest, now for this one time I do not rave. Men died. By tens of thousands died. Here before Troy. And why? No man had moved their landmarks or laid siege to their high walled towns. War took them, and they never saw their children. No wife with gentle hands shrouded them for their grave. They lie in a strange land, and in their homes are sorrows, too. Lonely women who died. Old men who waited for sons that never came. No son left to them to make the offering at their graves. That was the glorious victory they won. Oh, fools, the men who lay a city waste, giving to desolation temples, tombs, the sanctuaries of the dead. So soon to die themselves. But we, we Trojans, died to save our people. No glory greater. Our dead, the earth of their own land, has covered them. And Hector's pain. Your Hector. Mother, hear me. This is the truth. He died the best. A hero. The only shame is not to die like that. So, Mother, do not pity Troy or me upon my bridal bed. Now, if the high gods had not made you mad, I would have paid you for those evil words, but... Well, you know her mind is not quite right. So all she said against Greece and for Troy I never heard. The wind blew it away. Come with me to the ship now. Where is the ship? How do I go on board? Spread the sail... The wind comes swift. Mother, my mother, do not weep. Farewell, dear city. Brothers, 
in Troy's earth laid. My father, a little time, and I shall be with you. Now Cassandra is led off by the soldiers down toward the ships. Oh, the queen! See, she is falling. Oh, help! She cannot speak. Will you leave her on the ground? Up, lift her up. I cannot stand. Too much is on me. Oh, I will think of good days gone, crowning my sorrow by remembering we were kings, and a king I married. Sons I bore him, many sons. No woman, Trojan, Greek, or stranger had sons like mine. I saw them fall beneath Greek spears. Their father, I saw him fall, murdered. I myself, upon the altar when his town was lost. My daughters, maidens, reared to marry kings, was torn from me. All gone. No hope that I shall look upon their faces anymore, or they on mine. And now the end. An old gray slave, I go to Greece. I, who bore Hector. On the ground lay this old body down that once slept in a royal bed. Torn rags around me, torn flesh beneath. Rocks for my pillow. There to fall and die, wasted with tears. Soldiers are passing, straggling out of the city. They are loaded with plunder. Their ranks part, and a woman is seen coming forward with a child in her arms. Look, Hecuba, it is Andromache. And in her arms, her child is Cyanax, the son of Hector. Most sorrowful of women, where do you go? I go where the Greeks take me. Oh, sorrow. Oh, sorrow. Why should you weep? This sorrow is mine. My children gone. Gone. Happiness. Troy. And you live... Hector. My son, my eldest son, whom I bore to Priam, come to me. Lead me to death. Death. Oh, deep desire. Such is our pain for a city that has fallen. Look and see. The end of the house where I bore my children. Driven like cattle, captured in a raid, my child and I. The free changed to a slave. It is fearful to be helpless. Just now they took Cassandra from me. And still more sorrow for you. More than that. Number my sorrows, will you? Measure them. You have lost another daughter. Polyxena lies dead upon Achilles' tomb. Murdered. My child. And that is what the soldier meant. Could not read his riddle. She has died her death. And happier by far dying than I alive. Life cannot be what death is, child. Life is hope. Death is empty. Oh, mother. To die is only not to be. And rather death than life with bitter grief. They have no pain. They do not feel their wrongs. She is dead, your daughter. As if she never had been born. She does not know the wickedness that killed her. While I... Oh, Hector. My beloved. You were all to me. Wise. Noble. Mighty in wealth, in manhood. No man had touched me when you took me. Took me from my father's home. And you are dead. And I, with other plunder... Am sent by sea to Greece. You're dead, Polyxena, you weep for. What does she know of pain like mine? The living must have hope. Not I. Not anymore. I will not lie to my own heart. No good will ever come. We stand at the same point of pain. You mourn your ruin. And in your words, I hear my own calamity. A detachment of soldiers is approaching, coming up from the beach again. Wife of the noblest man that was in Troy. Oh, wife of Hector, do not hate me. Against my will, I come to tell you, 
The people and the kings have all resolved. What is it? Evil follows words like those. Your child must die. There. Now you know it all. They said a hero's son must not grow up. Girls on their own sons may that verdict fall. But from the towering wall of Troy be thrown. Now. Now let it be done. Don't cling so to him. Bear your pain the way brave women suffer. Don't look for any help. Think. The city gone. Your husband too. And you a captive and alone. One woman. How can you fight us? Bear it as best you can. Give me the child. No. Die, my best beloved. My own. My treasure. In cruel hands. Leaving your mother comfortless. Your father was too noble. That is why they kill you. Weeping, my little one. There, there. You cannot know what waits for you. Why hold me with your hand so fast? You little bird. Hiding beneath my wings. And Hector will not come. He will not come up from the tomb, great spear in hand, to save you. How will it be? Falling down, down, all broken, none to pity him. You little thing, curled in my arms, your mother's dearest. How sweet the fragrance of you. All nothing, then. This breast from which your baby mouth sucks milk. My labor, too. My care when I grew wasted watching you. Kiss me. Never again. Come closer. Closer. Your mother who bore you. Put your arms around my neck. Now, kiss me. Lips to lips. Wait. Take him. Throw him down. Feast on his flesh. God has destroyed me. And I cannot. I cannot save my child. Come, boy. Let go. And clasp those loving hands. Poor mother. Come now, up to the city wall, where you must die. Take him away. Now the soldiers are marching away into the empty city. One of them carries the child, Astyanax. Child. Son of my dear son. Poor child. What can I do for you? All I have now to give is grief. Tears and more tears. Falling. Falling. My cup is full. detachment of soldiers is returning from the city. Two of them are carrying on a shield the body of the child, Astyanax. They're bringing back the body. The dead child's body. The dead Astyanax. They threw him from the tower. As one might pitch a ball. And now they have brought him here. One ship is waiting, Hecuba, to take aboard the last of all the spoil. The chief himself had sailed because of news he had. And with him went Andromache, the dead boy's mother. And this bronze-fronted shield which Hector used in battle, she begged that he might lie upon it in his grave. And in your arms she told me I must lay him, for you to cover the body if you still. 
have anything. A cloak left. And to put flowers on him if you could. And she has gone. So, after you have laid him out and heaped the earth above him, when a loud trumpet call is sounded, go to the Greek ships and embark, all of you. Here is the body. See, one trouble I saved you. As we passed the stream, I let the water run on him and washed his wounds. Let the shield down. The great round shield of Hector. I wish I need not look at it. The shield is set down, and the Greek soldiers march off in formation. They have gone now, down the hill toward their ships. Hecuba and the other women are left alone. You conquered. Well, your spears are sharp, but not your wits. You feared a child. You murdered him. You were frightened then. You thought he might build up our ruined Troy. And yet, when Hector fought and thousands at his side, we fell beneath you. Now, when all is lost, the city captured and the Trojans dead, a little child like this made you a now Hecuba is kneeling beside the dead child. Poor oh, little one. How savagely our ancient walls have torn away the curls your mother's fingers made. And where she pressed her kisses. Here, where the broken bone grins white. Oh, no, I cannot. Dear hand. The same dear shape your father's had. How loosely now they fall. And dear, proud lips forever closed. How often have you climbed into my bed, called me sweet names and told me, Grandmother, when you are dead, I'll lead my soldiers all to ride out past your tomb. Not you, but I, old, homeless, childless, must lay you in your grave, so young, so miserably dead. What could a poet carve up in your tomb? The child lies here, whom strong men feared and slew. Ah, oh, they should boast of that. Oh, bring such covering for the dead body as we still have. God has not left us much to make a show with. Some of the women come forward, offering their torn clothes which Hecuba lays over the body of the child. Here for your hands we bring the shrouds. All that we have we give you. For this was once our prince. So on your wedding day I would have dressed you, the highest princess of the East, your bride. Now on your dead body I lay raiment, all that is left of the splendor that was Troy and the great shield of Hector. Glorious in battle, it too shall have its share of honor. Undying, it will lie beside the dead. You, child of our bitter sorrow, the earth will now receive you. Mourn, O oh mother, mourn, mourn, weeping for all the dead with bitter tears. Now the funeral rite begins. Hecuba's hands move over the child's body in a ritual gesture of healing the wounds. I heal your wounds. With linen I bind them. My words only not in truth. But soon among the dead your father will welcome you. Care for you. Beat. Beat your head. Lift your hands and let them fall. All this the gods would have pain for us, and pain for Troy. And yet, had God not bowed us down, not laid us low in dust, none would have sung of us or told our wrongs in stories men will listen to forever. Go, 
lay our dead in his poor grave with these last gifts of death given to him. I think those that are gone care little how they are buried. Now four of the women go off slowly toward the city, carrying the body of the dead child on the shield to bury it in Trojan soil. Poor mother. Her high hopes were stayed in you, and they are broken. They called you happy at your birth. A good man's son. Look! Look! On the heights of Troy, flame, fire! They are bringing torches! Fire! Fire! Look! Smoke is beginning to rise from the buildings of the city. This is the end, then. The height of sorrow. Troy is burning. But hurry, old feet, if you can, a little nearer. Here, where I can see my city. Say goodbye to her. You are so proud a city, and all the east the proudest. Soon your name, the whole world knew, will be taken from you. Ancient of days, our country's lord. Father who made us. You see your children suffering. Have we deserved them? Be seized, but Troy has perished. No city now, never again. Oh, terrible. The fire lights up the whole town. The inside rooms are burning. The citadel, it is all flame now. Troy is vanishing. War broke her. And what was left is going up in smoke. The glorious houses fall. First the spear. And then the fire. Children, hear your mother is calling. Children. They are dead, those you are calling. They will drive us away like cattle who are slaves out far away. Dead. Priam, my husband. You are dead. The evil that has found me, your wife, do you know? No. Death has darkened his eyes. He was good and the wicked killed him. So let him fall and be forgotten. The earth is kind. Not designing. Spreading out like smoke. I cannot see my house. All gone, all vanished. And we are gone. One here, one there. And Troy is gone forever. Is it the end? Do you know? The fall of Troy. Earthquakes and floods and the city's end. Trembling body, old weak limbs. Carry me on to slavery. Farewell, my city. Farewell, my home, where once my children stayed. There below, the Greek ships wait. The Trojan women walk slowly down the hill to the Greek ship. Toward their bondage. You have just heard the Columbia Workshop's production of the Trojan Women by Euripides, adapted for radio by John Houseman and Edith Hamilton from Miss Hamilton's translation. The score for sound and music was composed for this broadcast by Virgil Thompson. The players were... Mildred Natwick as Hecuba, Joanna Roos as Cassandra, Zeta Johan as Andromache, Jessica Tandy, Grace Coppin, and Rose Keane played the three women. George Kalouris was the soldier. The announcer was Byron McGrath. John Houseman directed. Next week at this same time, the Columbia Workshop will present two short contrasting pieces. The first is Symptoms of Being 35 by Ring Lardner, adapted by Vera Eichel. The second is The Electric King by Lord Dunsany, adapted by a writer new to radio, Alfred Eisman. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>